All right. Good morning, everybody. Good morning and happy Wednesday, everybody. Today is November 8th, 2023. And once again this morning, the top story, WTF is going on in real estate lending. This is two days in a row now that there have been rumors swirling, whispers, stories in secondary and even tertiary media about problems in the real estate lending market. And there is radio silence from the mainstream press. I mean, nothing coming from the mainstream press. And considering the potential scope of this problem, it's amazing that they're not talking about it. CNBC, Bloomberg, you know, they'll talk about the election information. They'll talk about the Israel story. They'll talk about anything but this. And this is potentially huge. Now, yesterday we talked about the Mr. Cooper hack, the biggest mortgage servicer in the country is hacked. Something like 4 million people can't pay their mortgages right now. You think that might cause a problem? 4 million people not paying their mortgages? You think maybe that might upset the natural order of things in the financial world? But nothing, nothing in the mainstream press about that. Uh, we talked about how the DTCC is jacking up margin requirements yesterday, uh, basically saying you can't borrow as much money against mortgage-backed securities. Well, gosh, that sounds an awful lot like what happened in the early innings of the Lehman Brothers crisis. Anybody want to cover that? Bloomberg, CNBC, Wall Street Journal, anybody? Nope, nothing, mum. And then there's this. Uh, story about occupancy fraud being on the rise. And there was this rumor that a mortgage lender was raided by the FBI that was swirling on Twitter. It was all over the place yesterday. Still no confirmation on that story. We still have no word about an actual FBI raid on any mortgage broker. But what we do have this morning is some new stories all centering around real estate lending. Now, I'm not sure if this is the source of the rumor of the FBI raid, but about yesterday afternoon, midday, the story broke that Meridian Capital was under investigation by Freddie Mac. Now, Meridian Capital is a big lender and a big broker in the commercial real estate space. They do a lot of big deals for multifamily housing. So this is now we're, we're, we're going from residential mortgages on to something more like CMBS, commercial real estate. So they're under investigation from Freddie Mac. Very few details available about this, but what we do know is Meridian is not able to do any business with Freddie Mac while they're under investigation. So one of the biggest lenders in multifamily real estate in the country, one of the biggest brokers, is not able to do any more deals involving Freddie Mac, which is the government-sponsored enterprise. So this is a big deal. Again, guys, I'm a little out of my comfort zone here. So the the phrases, the interrelationships, I want to be upfront with my own limitations here. I know enough to know this is a very big deal. I'm having a hard time putting the words together to explain it though. Uh, so I there's a very good chance that this Meridian story may be what the rumor mill was saying yesterday about the FBI raiding some mortgage broker. Now there was nothing in the press articles about the FBI, nothing about a raid, just an investigation in that they can't do any more deals with Freddie Mac. Also hitting the tape yesterday, we had Fannie Mae has announced that all broker-involved loans have to go to pre-review. Again, the terms here, I'm a little unsure, but basically it means, hey, all of you brokers out there who typically you go out and you write loans and then you hand them off to us, you sell them to us and we securitize them and sell them to the market. You need our approval before you issue those loans. Don't come to us with a loan that you've already issued and expect us to just buy it from you, no questions asked. We want to look at it first. So Fannie Mae is playing defense here. Now, I want you to view the Fannie Mae saying all brokered loans are now subject to pre-approval. Put that in the same context of the DTCC saying that margin requirements for borrowing against mortgage-backed securities are going up. There's risk in real estate lending right now, and the big players are getting defensive, they're getting careful. And that means that somebody found something, somebody messed up big time in the real estate lending, or it means that the music is slowing, or dare I say the music has stopped, and everybody is getting very careful. This, There's nothing in the mainstream press about this, and all of these stories, one after another, all viewed in aggregate, 
There's something really wrong in real estate lending right now. And again, go to the mainstream financial press. There's nothing going on. No, nobody's saying anything about it. So I am going to try to find a guest in the real estate lending area, somebody with a specialty or a better knowledge base in this area, see if I can set up an interview in short order to try to get you guys better information about what is going on right now in this industry. But there is definitely something up in real estate lending right now. Don't know what it is. Don't know how big a deal it is. I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to throttle my own excitement here or FUD here. I don't want to be too over the top. I don't want to be too doomy and gloomy. Um, then again, you know, Perma Bear, it's right there written in invisible ink right underneath Rando. Uh, I'm trying to find the words. There is something big going on in real estate lending. Oh, and the other thing, the Fed is cracking down on federal home loan banks or the FHLBs. And we've talked a little bit about FHLBs and federal home loan banks on this channel. They are the lender of second to last resort. It's kind of like a bank for banks. In March, when a lot of the smaller banks were struggling and when they were starting to go under, a lot of those smaller banks went and borrowed a lot of money from the federal home loan banks in order to stay solvent. Now, the mission of the federal home loan banks is to maintain capital, maintain funding for affordable housing. How's that working out? Anybody seen any affordable housing? There's got to be some affordable housing around here somewhere. It sure as heck isn't in any major city or metropolitan area anywhere in this country. Most, most people can afford in those cities as a tense these days. So the Fed is cracking down on the FHLB, or at least threatening to, saying that they're no longer meeting their mission, that they've turned into a slush fund for banks and a bailout fund for banks instead of their original mission of providing affordable housing. And the Fed's like, hey, picking winners and losing in the banking industry, that's our job, not your job, FHLBs. So the Fed is trying to seize even more control of the banking system. And by the way, speaking of the federal home loan banks not meeting their mandate or not achieving their mission, I would remind you that price stability and maximum employment is the mission of the Federal Reserve. How's that working out? So maybe the Fed ought to look in a mirror before they start going pointing fingers at the federal home loan banks. And with that, let's shrink my big melon of a head. And while we're doing that, guys, don't forget that like button. It helps out with the YouTube algorithm. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. We do this every morning. Have your coffee with the melon heads as we go through markets. The CNN Fear Greed Index sitting at 41 this morning on the verge of neutral territory. It's been on the rise for about two weeks now. The S&P 500 is set to open six points higher this morning. Not a lot of movement in stocks, 0.14% higher. Let's look at the S&P on a little bit more of a long-term basis, though. This goes back to about mid-March, the bottom from the banking crisis right here. You can see stocks just ripped all summer on AI mania. And then late summer, early fall, didn't like it so much. But check out these last couple of days. Nothing but green candles for the better part of a week and a half here. Seven consecutive days of ripping to the upside for the S&P 500. We have now retaken the 50-day moving average. I want to point that one out. Three days in a row here now above the moving the 50-day moving average. Major bullish indicator. But guys, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven green candles in a row. You usually don't get seven, certainly not eight, definitely not nine. So uh, keep in mind here that the S&P is due to take a breather at some point. The Dow is also looking pretty good, up 48 points this morning. Again, 0.14% to the upside ahead of the opening bell. And the NASDAQ is also just marginally higher, up 10 points, 0.07% higher for the NASDAQ this morning. Looking over at the commodities board, we've got gold is having a rough day, down another three bucks. So not really that bad a day. 0.2% lower for December gold futures, trading at $1,970. We've got silvers looking a little better. December silver futures trading at 22.81. That's up about 22 cents this morning, 1% higher for silver. And uh, looking at West Texas Intermediate, guys, crude oil, December crude futures at 76.61. The oil market has been getting hammered for these last two weeks, down another 76 cents or 1% lower today. And take a look at this chart, guys. Look at those red candles here, a couple days in a row down. Really, since late September, oil has been heading lower. Now, oil initially caught a breather after the onset of the, I don't want to say the onset, after the sudden escalation of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict that's been going on forever. Uh, oil was rising on that on the threat of supply disruptions and worries about another Arab oil embargo. 
But since the first week or so of that conflict, now we've got worries of demand destruction are more at the forefront. We got bad economic data out of China yesterday, slowing exports, even though their oil imports were on the rise. China is stockpiling oil. We talked about that one. And then we got a big inventory build in the U.S. yesterday, and oil prices just collapsed, now down below their 200-day moving average in oil. And here is the inventory data I'm talking about. United States API, that's the American Petroleum Institute. This is private sector oil inventory data. Stocks of crude oil in the U.S. jumped by almost 12 million barrels last week, 11.9 million barrels higher. That's the week ended November 3rd, following a 1.347 million barrel increase in the previous week. So big inventory build in oil. Uh, I would remind you guys about four or five weeks ago, we had a similar big number and oil prices tanked off of that information as well. So demand destruction is now in the driver's seat when it comes to oil prices. That could flip on a dime. The Saudis, the Russians, they don't like oil prices in the high 70s or the mid 70s. They like oil prices back closer to 90. So we'll see if the supply end makes a counteroffer to this demand disruption worry. Right now, the U.S. dollar is 23 basis points higher at 105.78. The dollar has rebounded somewhat in the last couple of days after falling from 107 down into the high 104s last week. And looking at the bond market, we got another mixed bag today. The 30-year is down three basis points at 4.70. The 10-year are yielding 4.568. That's uh, basically unchanged on the day. The two-year, 4.934. That's higher by one and a half points. And the one month at 5.39. Looking at the 10-year Treasury, again, the moving averages are playing a role here, guys. We lost the 50-day moving average yesterday. We are now below that. That's the first time we've been below the 50-day moving average since the end of July. So yields have been just falling really since we got the bad jobs data last week. Uh, we had the Fed last Wednesday, came out a little more dovish. We had Janet Yellen borrowing slightly less money than everybody was terrified she was going to borrow. So yields have really fallen here. Let's give this one a little more time to play out before we say the bond market has turned and we're in a new bond bull market because the underlying weakness in the bond market is still there. You've still got more supply than you have demand despite this recent surge of buying that has sent yields lower. Not sure I'm ready to throw in the towel on the bond bear market just yet. And check this one out. Reverse repos dropped again yesterday. Also, keep this in mind in the context of whatever is going on in the real estate borrowing market, because reverse repos dropped by $54 billion yesterday to $1 trillion, $9 billion. That is the lowest it has been since it stopped going up. So a new low in reverse repos. Now, again, reverse repo, this is the extra cash in the banking system. This is the liquidity cushion. When this runs out, all hell breaks loose in the bond market. That's just my theory. Maybe that plays out, maybe not. This has been dropping pretty much since the debt ceiling was suspended. We have seen a lot of treasury issuance. We have seen more demand for money than supply of money, especially as the Fed is tightening and the Fed is destroying money as they let bonds roll off of their balance sheet. So we've seen the reverse repo fall from about two and a quarter trillion all the way down to now essentially one trillion this red trend line that I drew here, guys, this is on track to hit zero sometime in mid-February, and uh, we're still on that trend. So let's talk a little bit about this story from yesterday about what's going on in the real estate market. Again, guys, nothing really clear. None of these stories really have all that much detail. Everybody's playing their cards really close here. Nobody wants to talk about what's going on. This is having some 2007 kind of vibes with for me here where... Nobody wants to be holding the hot potato. Nobody wants to talk about what's going on. The press certainly doesn't. Freddie Mac halts deal making for Meridian Capital and launches Probe. This one just hit yesterday. Freddie Mac has put Meridian Capital Group under the microscope after a loan brokered on behalf of the government sponsored entity was called into question. So they're saying a loan sponsored by Freddie Mac was called into question. That's okay. There's a loan and there's a question about it. Well, putting one of the largest loan brokers in the country on hold on suspension basically over that seems like kind of a rash reaction meridian has been barred from doing further deals as a place as placing deals through lenders that are freddie Mac seller services while the investigation is underway and the ralph herska owned firm has placed one broker on leave 
while it cooperates with the probe. Okay, so one loan and one guy. That's the only thing that's going on here, right? They, they always make it seem like, oh, there's just this one low-level guy is responsible for everything. Nothing else ever changes. A source familiar with the suspension said that Freddie Mac raised questions about a certain loan information and originations tied to the broker in question. Freddie Mac notified seller servicers that it would be suspending certain business involving Meridian late last week as a full investigation was launched. Now, one source opined that depending on the findings, buybacks could occur if it's found that Freddie Mac loans were originated outside of the agency's underwriting standards. So that's a little wishy-washy, the language. Buybacks, meaning uh, Meridian issued the loan, but it was outside of standards, meaning they broke the rules somehow, whether they lied or made a loan that didn't conform, whatever. So Meridian would have to buy back that loan which means Meridian would have to come up with the cash to buy back that loan, which could place Meridian in trouble. Another source, speaking more generally, said that tweaking or manipulating loan information in order to conform to underwriting criteria, agency or otherwise, often goes unnoticed in good markets, but comes to the fore at times of dislocation. So there's some gentle work, wording there, right? So tweaking or manipulating loan information in order to conform to underwriting criteria. Let's shorten that and just say lying on loans, lying. That's all what they're doing, tweaking or manipulating to make it look like it conforms. Yeah, lying. That usually goes unnoticed when times are good. We saw that in the lead up to the GFC, but it comes to the forefront at times of dislocation. You ever hear the expression, when the tide goes out, you find out who's been swimming naked? Well, maybe the tide is going out. Maybe that's what's going on here, and that's why we're finally starting to hear about this. They added that any sign of bad information and originations could spark a full investigation of a firm. So they're they're hinting here. These are anonymous sources. Nobody's willing to talk. There's very limited information here. It is suspected that Meridian did something against the rules with one of their loans. They're saying it was just this one guy. But this entire firm, one of the biggest lenders in the commercial real estate business, was just frozen out of Freddie Mac because of it. So maybe there's a little bit more going on than just the one story. Now, we had something else go on. Now, this is on Twitter. This is paywalled, so I'm not able to get the article up. But Fannie Mae subjects broker-involved agency loans to pre-review. That's according to Commercial Observer, who won't let me read the article. Uh, Fannie Mae is another one of the big government-sponsored enterprises, another one of those big, you know, they buy loans from the brokers, they package them up into bonds, and they sell them into the bond market. Well, Fannie Mae, on the same day this story about Meridian is happening, on the same day as this rumor of an FBI raid at a mortgage broker, Fannie Mae says, all broker-involved loans now need to get approved from us before you go and issue them. So again, this is, uh, guys, they're, they're being careful. They are, they're really playing defense here. And let's talk a little bit more about playing defense because this story, it's a little obscure, but Warning of U.S. office real estate drags German bank shares lower. This German bank, which I couldn't pronounce if my life depended on it, just took a big hit to their earnings. Shares of a German lender fell as much as 14% after a profit warning due to the struggling commercial real estate market in the U.S. All right, here we go. Deutsche Fundbrief Bank. How did I do? Apologize, apologies to my German friends out there. We're going to call them PBB. PBB slumped as the German lender late on Tuesday said it it would increase its risk provisions due to persistent weakness in the commercial real estate market. It now sees pre-tax profits for the year between 90 million euros and 110 million euros, about $96 million, versus its prior guidance at the beginning of the year for profit of 170 to 200 million euros. So guys, their profits are getting cut in half here by commercial real estate in the U.S., <laughs> That's a big deal when this bank's profits get cut in half. The bank, informally called PBB, also canceled its special dividend. Yikes, they're cash-strapped at this bank, guys. In a presentation, PBB said structural changes in locations and preferences were leading some tenants to avoid central business districts. At time of origination, all U.S. office properties financed by PBB were in A locations. Now, 5 to 10% of them are considered B locations. However, it said about 80% of the market correction is assumed to have happened. Many ex-prime locations are likely to achieve prime status again in expected market recovery. 
Now, this is the arrogance of the banks here, guys, on full display. They're saying 80% of the market correction in commercial real estate is assumed to have already happened. The only way that statement is true is if the Fed starts cutting rates like today, like right away. That's the only way that statement's true. This bank is basically banking their survival on the Fed cutting rates soon. And this is a German bank. This isn't even a U.S. bank that is right now being clobbered by commercial real estate, particularly office loans here in the States. 80% of the correction assumed to have already happened. Guys, they still froze withdrawals in every major real estate fund in the world. They're not letting people take their money out because they know if they have to, if they let people take their money out, they'll have to sell properties. And if they sell properties, they're not gonna get anywhere near what they paid for them and they won't be able to meet all their withdrawals. The commercial real estate collapse is just getting started. It's definitely not 80% over, as this bank is saying. The property values on non-performing loans, it has dropped 41% on average, the bank said. Even those of its performing loans fell 24%. So here you've got a German bank. This is about 50, million, 50 billion euros in assets. So this is a medium-sized German bank. Seeing their earnings cut in half, their dividend is going away. They are getting clobbered by commercial real estate in the U.S. And here you go, five, $5.80 for shares of PBB down 11.5% on this news. And I also want to talk about this one. U.S. calls for new limits to Wall Street Bank backstop after March crisis. We're talking about the federal home loan banks here. Lenders face new loan limits on federal home loan bank usage. U.S. officials will seek to limit access to federal home loan banks after failing lenders turn to the $1.3 trillion system in desperate bids to survive March's banking crisis. The Federal Housing Finance Agency will try to push FHLBs back to their roots in housing finance and away from serving as lenders of last resort to troubled banks, according to a report published Tuesday. The plans would ratchet up federal oversight and seek to direct banks toward the Federal Reserve's discount window in times of extreme stress. Banks borrow hundreds of billions of dollars from the government-chartered FHLBs each year to fulfill short-term funding needs. The practice came under scrutiny after the FHLBs, which have implied backing from the government, lent heavily to Silicon Valley Bank, Signature Bank, and First Republic as they careened toward failure. So here you've got the Federal Reserve is trying to say, oh, our banks are borrowing all this money from the FHLBs to stay alive. We need to limit the federal home loan banks. Here's an idea. How about we throttle back the Fed? That is the reason why these freaking banks are failing in the first place. Why are we blaming the federal home loan banks? And by the way, I am no champion of the federal home loan banks. I'm not a big fan of the system. I have no horse in this race. But why is it every time the Fed screws something up, the proposed solution is give the Fed more power? That's how you fix this? When the Fed creates a problem, you make the Fed bigger? Stupid answers to stupid problems for a thousand, Alex. Can't help this one. So, guys, what a mess in real estate lending right now. Just absolute mess going on. I wish I could give you better information and tell you exactly what's going on, especially this story about the FBI raid, whether it happened or didn't happen. I don't know if this Meridian story is what people are talking about with the raid. Again, no mention of the FBI in that article that I read you guys, but something is going on in that industry, guys. I don't know what it is. I don't like the smell of it, though. And I want to say thank you to Water168, who says, what up with XLE and crude oil? Please go over a chart. Thank you. All right, let's look at the XLE chart real quick. Guys, energy right now, I'll tell you the big story with energy, it's demand destruction versus supply disruption. That is the name of the game. I'm, I'm not going to bring up the chart because I haven't had a chance to really look at it. I'm not going to try to do it on the fly. Um, when it comes to energy, guys, you have got two major forces at play here. You have got the demand destruction, which right now is winning, the threat of a global slowdown. Shipping is slowing down. Trucking is slowing down. All right, so that means demand destruction. That means less energy demand. That is dragging prices lower. We talked about that oil inventory report from yesterday. That is dragging oil lower. The flip side of the coin is supply disruption. That's the bullish case for energy. The Saudis producing less, the Russians producing less, the possibility of maybe sanctions on Iran being cranked up because of the Israel, the Israel Hamas conflict, the possibility that maybe oil infrastructure starts getting targeted. We've had the Houthi rebels in Yemen have been lobbing missiles at Israel. Well, they used to lob missiles at the Emirati and Saudi oil infrastructure. That could change at any minute. So 
Right now, the narrative in energy markets is demand disruption. That could turn on a dime to supply disruption, but right now demand is in the driver's seat and that means energy price is heading low. I would add in the oil chart, every time West Texas intermediate prices have gone to the low 70s or high 60s, basically for, for the entirety of this year, anytime oil prices have gotten this low, we have seen a cut in production from the Saudis and the Russians, OPEC plus, and it's sent oil prices back higher. So right now we're heading lower because everybody's worried about demand until they aren't. It could be supply next week. It could be supply by the end of this day. You never know what the rate things are, are escalating in the Middle East. So thank you, Water168. Appreciate the super chat, support of the channel. And thank you, the inflation situation, who says thanks for all you do, my man. Shout out to the chat moderators. Well, thank you, TIS. And thank you to my Blue Wrenches for keeping things neat and tidy in the chat also. I appreciate you guys very much. Thank you for the kind words, TIS. And Edward Diaz1130 says, isn't it weird that no one's talking about a potential government shutdown next week? I think it's just exhaustion on that subject, Edward. I really do. Um, 1117, is that when the funding runs out? Couldn't that send Treasury yields back up? Um, yes, it could send Treasury yields back up. I, I don't think necessarily any like specific market mechanics sending yields back up because of the the government shutdown because the government shutdown it's just a farce guys it's political theater it it really has no net effect on spending sometimes it actually even though you actually get a slight increase in spending from government shutdowns because it takes money to shut things down and spin them up again um but it could send yields higher because it could shake confidence in the government's finances further. Remember, I believe it was uh, Fitch downgraded the U.S. credit rating back in June because of the stupidity of the debt ceiling debacle and the lack of any fiscal discipline in Congress. So if we get another government shutdown, we could see another downgrade of the U.S. credit rating just because it shows what a bunch of clowns Congress is, not necessarily because of any specific market mechanics associated with the bond market. But yes, I do think it could send Treasury yields back up. Um, I'm not necessarily buying this new bull market in bonds right now. I, I, I'm i just not convinced of it yet. Although that 50-day moving average on the 10-year yield, that is a significant technical breakdown. Thank you very much, Edward Diaz. Appreciate the super chat, sir. And thank you, Steve Woitis. says, radio silence from the media. Anyone else find the silence deafening? I sure as heck do, Steve. He says, does the MSM think any negative news could set the markets tumbling? Um, I am increasingly of the opinion that the mainstream media's job is to just enforce whatever narrative that the government, that they want enforced. All right. I see it more and more increasingly every day. The more I learn about this stuff, the more gross it becomes. Uh, so right now, yeah, I don't think, I don't think the mainstream press will cover this story until it's already happened until it's already the biggest story in the world that they can't ignore anymore. Uh, they'll give their guys time to cash out, to position themselves before they give you the information. They may even tell you now is a great time to get in. You may start to see articles saying buy MBS right now because their guys are selling. I mean, I maybe I'm getting a little too, uh, I don't know, maybe I've been wearing this thing a little bit too much lately, Steve. Uh, but what I see, margin requirements at the DTC, rumors of FBI raids, Meridian being kicked out of Freddie Mac. Um, Fannie Mae sending everything to pre-review. Uh, what else did we have? Mr. Cooper getting hacked. Nobody talking about 4 million people unable to pay their mortgages. Stories about mass occupancy fraud. The ban on short-term rentals resulting in potentially a massive dumping of supply onto the market. I see a lot of things in real estate finance right now that are worthy of mainstream press attention, especially considering the history of housing finance and the role it played in the global financial crisis. And there's nothing. There's nothing because we can't have anything that dents the narrative of our banks are strong and resilient and well capitalized. And uh, yeah, thank you, Secretary Yellen, for that. So thank you, Steve Wojtis. I appreciate the super chat and the support of the channel. And thank you, everybody, for your time this morning, for having your coffee with the Melon Heads. Uh, thank you, my Patreon supporters, for everything you guys do for the channel. Looking forward to talking to you guys at 6 p.m. Eastern time for our weekly get together on Zoom. Link down below should you feel so inclined. Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. I love you guys. Until next time, live small and dream big.